Hello, it's Lou Collins. Thank you so much for joining my channel. I appreciate you being here. Um, I can't wait to show you how I put together this card. So this is probably going to be the last of my autumnal cards for this year. So I want to go with a really bright pop of colour as outside here, certainly in the UK at the moment, the leaves are doing all these beautiful colours at the moment. Um, so this is Warm Wishes on here. The dies that I've used are Paper Discovery, Bountiful Harvest, Harvest Leaves die set. I've used a Texture Steampunk outline, uh, Alphabet Outline dies and I've used the Textures, Nordic Christmas Sentiments and Tags. All of these are linked below as are Distress Inks, Distress Oxides, which of course I'm using a lot here as well. So let's get started and see how I put this together. So let's start by creating some amazing colour on this white cardstock. So I'm going to be using um, all these different Distress Oxides, lots of different colours uh, that will give us some really gorgeous autumn leaf effects. Um, I've got my blending bottles as well. I'm going to be using these. And I'm just going to very randomly place all of these. I'm not going to worry about how they mix because if we get browns in there, it doesn't matter. Because of course this is, um, oh, it's autumn colours, it's autumn leaves. So let's start with the red and I'm just going to do random patches. Now I've cut my cardstock first of all to A5 because I know that that's then going to go absolutely perfectly inside my um, smaller cutting machine. So I can do all these leaves at once in that. Um, I have got a super smooth cardstock as well because super smooth just means that this ink blending that I'm doing is going to work really well. There we go. So usually green and red would say don't mix the two, don't put them back next to each other. But we can do that. I'll probably pop something like an orange in the middle of there anyway. There we go. Nice green. This is Twisted Citron. I'm popping that in spots, just in areas. And then let's go in with the yellow. So this is squeezed lemonade, another really bright, almost a neon yellow. So loading this up, this one's actually um, a new ink pad and a new brush. So it's not fully loaded with the ink yet. So it takes a little bit longer to kind of get that onto the paper because the bristles just want to soak it all up. So just trying to mix it in with the red and the green there. Let's go with this. So this darker green is beautiful. This is such a strong color. And I'm going to put this down near the Twisted Citron. And anything like this, I'm going to blend in later. So don't worry too much at the moment about the fact that your colors are <laughs> showing some, some areas where they're not quite blending beautifully. We'll sort that out afterwards. I really like this green, so let's put another patch over here as well. Now you can be blending the colours together, say like the red and green there, as you go, or you can do it all at the end. Uh, orange, I haven't done carved pumpkin yet, have I? This is going to be a major one. So this is going to fill in a lot of the gaps that we've got. This is going to work beautifully between the reds and the uh, yellows. Still work with the oranges as well. There we go, lovely, gorgeous colours. And lastly, this purple. Now this purple is a bit of an odd one, you don't usually see too much in the way of purples, but if you're thinking about deepening your reds, see that is going to work really well for a nice bright colour. So this is looking a bit of a mess at the minute. I admit that, that's, that's fine, that's all what it is. But you see the yellow and the purple there, actually they make a nice brown. Let's just put a strip of purple here. This will just hopefully capture the edge of a leaf or two and give us a really nice colour. Beautiful. Okay, now I've got my base colours down. I'm going to see where do I need more. I definitely need more of the yellow, but I think I'm going to come in with fossilised amber. I'll use the same bristle brush just because this might show up a little bit more. Yes, a little bit of a darker colour, a deeper, deeper yellow starting to blur some of those lines there into the orange and the red. We don't want any patches with white left, that's one thing we don't want. And just start mixing between all of your colours, getting those nice, nice blended edges. Now you've got complete ink coverage. Uh, Lucky Clover needs to be blended out a little bit more. Really pretty colour though. There we go, not bad, not bad, okay. 
I'm liking that, I think. I'm happy with that. I say I'm happy with that and then I carry on, but I could keep doing that for a long, long time. So let's just make sure I've got... Right, let's put these away. Or not put, put the brushes to the side. I'm going to bring in this and just put a little bit of one of the darker colours down. So a little bit of Lucky Clover down. Spritz a little water. Get a paintbrush and flick this over some of those colours. Now that is a really nice concentrated colour, as you can see, nice and dark there. Uh, put that to the side, because what I also want to do is just allow that to dry for a moment. You can use your heat tool as well, if you wish, just to let that dry. Beautiful rainbow, rainbow colours. Imagine how stunning that's going to look. We've well, seen how stunning that's going to look over that craft cardstock. Just beautiful. Okay, and lastly, let's just now lift up a little of that colour. So putting some of the water into my fingers and just gently flicking it on and see instantly that starts brightening up so speckles on there as well and you can give that another dry that doesn't need very long on there at all there we go okay you want to make sure this is fully dry before you do the next stage because die cutting with wet paper is not a good idea you won't get the nice clean lines that you want so now it's time to start placing our leaves down now i think i want the edge of oh, i certainly want a good amount of a leaf to fall within the purple so let's make sure that we've got a couple of them with a nice purple what i'm trying to do with each leaf is ensure that we get at least three colors on there once we've cut them if you find that um if you find that you've got edges that you want you want to add a bit more color you can do that don't worry we can add some color in a little while but let's see if we can just get one more in here which way should we go with that? There we go. Okay, happy with that positioning. So now I'm going to take it into my die cutting machine. Now, as this comes out of the machine, you can already see those leaves, aren't they absolutely beautiful? One more there, I think that's all of them. I'll clean those up in a minute. Don't they look stunning? They are so, so pretty. Those colours are gorgeous and I don't think I've got any areas that I'm not happy with either. I think, I'll just double check, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, yes, yeah, seven leaves. So I've got them all cut, aren't they beautiful? Now, like I said, if there's any areas where you find you've caught the edge, it's a little bit white, um, you can go in and you can uh, just add some more ink, just direct from the brush if you want to. But I think they're perfect. I don't want to play with, play around with those any further. So now we need to start work on our background. So the background is going to be the white cardstock with the craft over the top. So I've already cut this to size. This is a DL size card base, white card base, because I just think the white will help uh, really give that, uh, those colors a nice punch. And you can see these on here are just going to look stunning. Um, but I want to deepen and darken this part as well. So the craft card stock. So bringing in my blending mat, I just need to give this a wipe first of all. Uh, now what I'm going to do is have the leaves coming from the bottom here and then my sentiment at the top here. So I'm going to use these three browns. So this is probably one of the closest to the actual craft colour, although slightly darker. Then I've got brown espresso and then I've got black soot. So all three of these I'm going to be using to create an ombre effect. So really making those colours pop even further, just like so. As always, just to kind of hide any imperfections, I'm just going to give a light spritz and then I'm also going to give a, a heavier splattering of ink and just let that sit. Now while that's sitting, I might just add some ground espresso dots. So in the same way as we did with the green, a little bit of water. There we go, happy with that. Just going to allow that all to dry before we start putting this card together.
So I just took a short interval there to stitch around that card base up once it had dried. Uh, just using a white um, white thread in my sewing machine. Tension's a little bit um, high on the top thread, so it, it's given me this actually really interesting different look. You can see on the reverse, that's how the stitching should look, but I really like that, so I'm happy with that. I also, while I was there, I die cut my sentiment. Now I'm going to say warm wishes on this one. Um, so I have used the alphabet die which all comes in one piece so it's really nice and easy and quick to run through this is from the textures range uh, the steampunk type so i've die cut from black uh, w a r m from there and then from the textures again from the nordic christmas range i've just die cut the word wishes there in the brush font it's actually much larger than you can see on the packet uh, from a gold mirror card so i've got these ready to put together so now let's attach this with some really good strong foam tape onto my card base and that will also help to keep all of the um, threads, any loose threads there from coming away. There we go. Just peel off the backing. This is the craft stash foam tape is really good again everything's going to be linked below including the adhesives because i think the adhesive is really important um, we all have our preferences but it's good to see what other people use and i really really love this adhesive so there we go so we've got that on there um, i'm going to place these leaves on but to adhere them i'm actually going to use a really cool material and this is the creative adhesive foam sheets now this one is in black you can just see the black down the center so um, what i'm going to do is die cut each of the leaf silhouettes that i've just used excuse me rummaging around with the packaging there so i'm just going to run back through my die cutting machine each of these leaves that i've used the seven shapes to create an adhesive backing which will have a nice drop shadow effect because it's got the black foam rather than the white so arrange them, doesn't matter because these are all going to be separated anyway, so it doesn't matter how they're arranged on here. Now this foam cuts absolutely beautifully. Uh, a tip for you though, if you can, leave your foam within the backing sheet. So rather than pulling the pieces out at this stage, remove your dies, leave the foam in there. It's just going to make this next stage much, much easier for you. So I'm now going to peel off the top sheet, so kind of the, the backing sheet from one side of the foam. And I'm going to find my coordinating leaf and place that down on top. This is so much more accurate and less fiddly than releasing each of the pieces and then trying to attach them. So just fit that in there. So. I'll go ahead and do this with each of the leaves. Aren't these colours absolutely beautiful? I can't get over how stunning these colours are. So work your way through the leaves, just placing the backing on each one before we then put them onto our card. go now all my leaves are in place I can release them from the foam backing and keep the foam you never know when you're going to want these this smaller bit this is going to make a really lovely silhouette actually um, which I think you could peel off the front backing paper as such and cover it with glitter or flocking powder or something like that if you want to or even if you've got some foils at home some of the cold set foils so just that one's a little bit fiddly that leaf i'll pop the pieces out in a moment and this is just a bigger version of that so again it's a bit fiddly got some pieces inside to take from these ones you see how they just die cut absolutely beautifully and that was just running it through the machine just once on the same setting as if i was cutting the average cardstock or paper so remove the pieces from that one and the same with this one as well so now we've got this wonderful drop shadow and these leaves will be slightly elevated from the card okay so let's place these on now we're going to this is a really i think these two leaves are the key ones these are the biggest ones i, think I might actually because they're sort of supposed to look like falling leaves um i might bring this one oh i don't know 
Now I'm in an R ring now. I think I might put this one upside down so it looks a bit like it's a falling leaf. And we can trim the edges as well. They don't all have to be full leaves if we want part leaves as well. So let's place this one there. And this one, so just now taking the backing off. If you can, try and get it off in one piece, but I obviously didn't on this one. And place this one there. And then we want to make sure we arrange these colours as well. So I think I'll put the green, put a green here. You don't have to use all the leaves if you find that actually you've got too many. Um, Do we put this one? I might might leave that one actually. In fact, if you've got a spare leaf, you could put it. Um, it could go on your envelope, for example. I think this one. This might just tuck under here. I think. I think I prefer that. So just tucking this. Oh, I see. Okay. Kind of wrapping the leaves around each other a little bit. Just make sure that's nice and neat on there. In fact, let's take that away. There we go. That fits better, doesn't it? Look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. I'm sad that I can't get this leaf on, but there's no point trying to force room for it. I'm just seeing whether I could fit that in. Do you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. It's such a beautiful colour. Now, where you've got sticky elements kind of overlapping in places, let's just put that under and like so. So just on the edges here, I've got the sticky and that's obviously exposed and that could catch on the envelope and such. So my advice is to take uh, an anti-static bag that you use for stamping and just tap the powder all over the back until you reduce that stickiness right down. If you want to, you can of course take your backing paper and um, re-stick that over. So there. So I've got foam added onto the back of each of my sentiments there, the warm and the wishes. Uh, just before I put that on though, I am going to add a few little white splats. This is just going to add little highlights. Um, a little bit like um, as we did with the water when we did the ink blending, but this is obviously a bright white. So I use Dr. PH Martin's Bleed Proof White, and this is like a white paint, white ink. Um, I bought it for calligraphy, but I find I use it actually more now for my card making. So just splatting, dipping that in and splatting it around. The more you have, so if you want some bigger splats, just add more paint. To your brush there we go now I would suggest let that dry thoroughly before you go ahead and put your wording on because if you don't you're going to end up with um, smudging areas okay now being really really careful and in fact this is where tweezers a rummage in my tools beside me tweezers are going to come in really handy um, to get this nice and accurate so just peel off the backing from each letter I'm starting with M uh, being the letter that's going to be the furthest away and I was going to come just to the edge here, place that on nice and straight. So by starting with the M, that way I make sure I don't run out of room. And then the R, and I'm going to put these really close together. Again, ensuring that your, your ink splats, your white splats are either dry or you're very careful around them. Not to smudge them, because that will really ruin the effect touching the letters there right next to each other and one more just the W you can see how close that is to the edge here now there we go ah, pretty good spacing there to be honest happy with that and then the wishes so peeling off the backing of this I even put the foam on this does cut beautifully with intricate dies like this as well. I've got a little bit in the S there, just in the curve. And oh, and another one in the bottom of that S too. Let's just take those out. 
nice neat finish. There we go, okay. And let's place this put in the upright of the H between the R and the M. And then, so this is just overlapping slightly those letters in places, like so. Beautiful, that gold really stands out. Warm wishes. And there we have it. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Um, I really appreciate you joining me on my channel. I'd love it if you could subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, drop us a like and, of course, check out all the products that I've used down in the description below. Take care, everybody. Have a lovely day.